What is your guilty pleasure snack? Honestly, I love uh, cheese. So, <laughs> um, just like really good cheese or like melty cheese is like, I'll just eat cheese. Yeah. This is going to sound so bizarre. I'm going to get this clip back and they're going to be like, this girl's obsessed with cheese. <laughs> I I feel like it's it's more of a problem for anyone who's not a little bit. Like a healthy obsession with cheese is, is right for this world, I think. Welcome back to Stacking Growth Snacks. I'm Steph Craniola and I'm here with Sydney Waterfall and we are talking about the inbound buying experience and funnel conversion. So we've gone through what the inbound buying experience looks like. We've gone through how to optimize it and KPIs. We've gone through phase one and two of the process. So today we are going to hit phases three and four in detail. So Sydney, can you walk us through, let's start, let's start with phase three. Yeah, let's jump into it. So phase three is essentially the initial meeting and like kind of that next step. Phase uh, four is going to be once a deal or opportunity is created, and all the way to close one. So <clears throat> phase three, we've kind of broken down into two steps, which is the initial meeting. So that's right after that first meeting gets booked, right? Who is having that meeting? Where is it routing? What is the goal of that meeting? Normally it is the initial discovery meeting, give some information, maybe a small demo about whatever product you're, you're selling. Uh, but it's a critical step in the sales process because it sets the stage for like, it's like the first impression, right? Maybe second impression. First impression might be your website, but your second impression is going to be like, you're finally raising your hand and talking to sales. What does that look like? The biggest like watch out for this phase is to try to get all of the discovery done ahead of this call. This is very specific to your internal sales structure and sales process. So <clears throat> during phase three and four, marketing is not the leader. You are the supporter, but you want to understand what's going on so that you can optimize things. And then that way, if you see a conversion rate drop or something like that, you, you know what is happening, what is sales doing and what is the expected flow so that you can kind of understand, ah, oh, like, this conversion rate is dropping. Maybe that means that our, you know, first meeting flow change and why did that change? And then you can work with sales to figure that out. The more productive that discovery meeting can be, the more helpful it is to the prospect, not internal teams, usually the better outcome you're gonna have. And, you know, I am not a sales coach, <clears throat> but this is just what I've seen <laughs> work well. There's plenty of sales all-stars um, out there. Now, one thing I'll say about phase three, which is the initial meeting and next steps, phase four is gonna be your deal or opportunity creation. Depending on your sales cycle, your ACV, your, your sales flow, some companies do create deals and opportunities like right when that first meeting gets booked. So it really just depends on your organization, but we broke it out in these two steps so you can kind of think about it in two, two different ways. So for some companies, if you do create the opportunity or uh, like very early in the sales process, these are gonna be really close to each other. For other companies, usually that have higher ECV or longer sales cycle, these are gonna be stretched out, right? You're gonna have a meeting set, then after that meeting, then once you've identified if it's a qualified buyer and they have um, urgency to buy, then create the opportunity. So it just depends. I just wanted to put that uh, disclaimer out. So for people, you know, normally this is going to be the team member um, that booked the meeting if you're doing it manually or the technology that did it. Um, this could also be your SDR could be taking this meeting or BDR or your sales rep trying to figure out who's doing what right in this handoff. Um, sometimes in a discovery meeting, you also bring in other people depending on your technology and your buying cycle and how technical the product it is. Sometimes you can use a sales engineer subject matter uh, expert. So kind of just look at all of that when you think about people. But the key here is to deliver value as quickly as possible and answer their questions as quickly as possible. Normally they want to have, they've got product questions, they've got very specific use case they're coming into, and they all want to know pricing. So even if you don't have a pricing page, 
typically you're giving them like a pricing ballpark, like, okay, it's going to be in this ballpark to even understand if they should keep continuing the conversation. So all of that's going to be in people. And then under process, you want to understand like how the meeting should be conducted and, and what are those follow-up steps. So what is being discussed about the company and the solution? How long is that meeting? Is it too long? Is it not long enough? Who do you often find attending that first meeting from a prospect point of view? Why or why not? What are common questions that are being asked in the meeting? Is there a structure for sales or is it really dependent on the sales rep themselves? And then what do the next steps look like? So typically for every sales funnel stage, you're gonna have entry criteria and exit criteria. Okay, so we've had this first meeting. What is the exit criteria for sales? So if they are qualified, what things need to be true to move them to the next funnel stage? Um, what things would disqualify them and need to be true to get them out of the funnel and make sure that's well documented. Most of the time it's not, <laughs> but this will help you in the process category. And then technology. So during this phase, you're gonna technology stack that you're gonna look at is like conversation intelligence, sales analytics tools, um, call recording tools and outreach tools as well are going to be the topics and the categories that you look into. These tools like record and report on prospect and customer conversations, they aggregate insights. So if you have some of these, look into these, how you're using these, how you, could you be using them better? If you're not, identify manual ways where maybe a technology could help um, in this space. Awesome. You want to bring it home with phase four? All right, phase four. This is when your opportunity or deals are created all the way to close one. So this is really when sales is selling and converting the deal. So this phase includes all sales activities and subsequent meetings, any resources, enablement, things that are needed to move a deal forward to close one, close loss, or close nurture. This is sales territory. They are the expert here. They've been testing different ways to make the impact and increase win rates and everything like that. Uh, marketing and campaign can kind of support as needed, but as a marketer, it is really crucial to understand what sales processes are and what are key points in the funnel. Again, so that you can understand if a conversion rate is increasing or decreasing, why? Oh, maybe, you know, sales is converting, you know, stage two to stage three much higher because they've done X, Y, or Z to improve that process. Marketing can also support in these phases by targeting additional people in the buying committee, things like that, working with the sales team to try to help them to increase win rates. People in process is pretty straightforward. It's the sales team, it's AEs, it's subject matter experts, sales solutions, technical engineers, depending on how technical your product is, or other relevant enablement roles within the sales organization. Those are going to be the people who's doing what. It is ne not necessarily your job to say who should be doing what in this phase, but just understand the dynamics of this phase. The sales leadership and sales managers have much, probably more experience than marketers in that specific phase. But again, it's really important to understand and partner with them. Because if you partner with them, you'll get more insights on what's going on. You're gonna hear, ah, oh, at this stage in our buying process, we keep running into this objection. Awesome, let's figure out a way that marketing can help with content or web content or enablement or anything that can help the sales team convert. And then phase four is technology. So, your number one technology, and this is going to be your CRM. <laughs> and it should be honestly your source of truth from phase two to phase four. Once that person fills out that form and they get into your CRM, everything should be source of truth in your CRM. Even if you're using outside other technologies, sales team will be logging notes, contacts, meetings, activities, potentially creating like account plans. If it's like a larger deal, things like that. Typically you want to be able to see and access those things in your CRM. And just like in phase three, the conversational 
intelligence and sales analytics tools also play here. So um, sales outreach platforms are going to be utilized typically for communicating, uh, meeting recordings, nurtures, follow-up tasks, all of that kind of stuff. So that's the really the technology that's going to be most useful here. And in this phase, the technology is going to be optimizing things for the sales team. What are they doing manually that we can accelerate on? Is there anything that would be more valuable for them to do account or contact research, things like that. So there's a ton of AI tools on the market these days. There's a ton of other intelligence tools. So that's really the technology piece uh, in phase four. This has been a really great breakdown. Uh, there's been a lot of good detailed information in this session and the last two as well. If you could distill all of this into one little crumb of wisdom or advice, just a little piece that people can take away, what would that be? I'm gonna break this into steps because I'm a, I'm a process person, which I've mentioned in the, in the previous episode. So, you need to understand your lead to close KPIs for this funnel. And you need to monitor those and you need to share those with your sales team and everybody in this process. So these KPIs are going to inform where you optimize and how you optimize the funnel. Conversions to meetings requested, meetings requested to meetings booked, meetings booked to meetings attended, um, meetings held to your hero, qualified opportunities, qualified hero opportunities to close one, and then your conversion rates underneath those, and then the pipeline velocity. The reason that we audit this immediately when we work with a customer is because there's often so much low hanging fruit that while you're getting your marketing campaigns up and you're trying to launch demand creation strategies, which take time, there's often easy things that you can do to immediately increase revenue that quarter. And so let's start there with capturing the demand, converting the demand, using this process and all of the steps that we just laid out. Start there first get that done. Now you feel confident that your funnel is a well-oiled machine, at least for this go-to-market motion. And now you can go do fun marketing activities. <laughs> awesome. Sydney, thank you so much. Where can people find, follow, and connect with you? I'm on LinkedIn per usual for every marketer out there. No, um, it's the channel I'm most active on. You can also find me um, supporting Refine Labs and Refine Labs content always and on um, LinkedIn under Sydney Waterfall. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you everyone for watching and listening and we'll see y'all next time.